from the Bucknell team here in Stoke-on-Trent. And Lord, as we gather together to worship you and to listen to your word today, God, we pray that you would be near to us, draw near to us, God, as we draw near to you today. I pray, Lord, for everyone that's watching, that, Lord, we might um, encounter you today through our worship. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So today it is the second Sunday of Lent already. Goodness me, this is our opening prayer. So almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all things that are agreeable to the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who's alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All creation gives you praise. You alone are truly great. You alone are God who reigns. For eternity. Thank you for joining with us today. It's um, it's great that you could. Um, our readings today are going to come from Romans and from Mark's Gospel. We're going to worship together. We're going to listen to God's Word, and we're going to spend some time in prayer as well. So, thank you for joining with us. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings, and by following in His way, come to share in His glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So come on, let's join together in praise of our wonderful God. Love divine, all love's excelling joy of heaven to earth.
Yes, Lord. Amen. And Lord, as we as we continue in our time together, Lord, we bring ourselves before you. We recognise that, Lord, there's things in our hearts, there's words that come from our mouths. Lord, there's things that we do that are not honouring to you, that, that pull people down instead of lifting them up. And Lord, we just pause for a moment, Lord, to just bring ourselves before you. And God, we pray that you would refill us and remould us and remake us. Thank you for your promise that you take our sins and you separate them as far as the east is from the west. And Lord, we receive your forgiveness today. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for a fresh start. Thank you, God, that new every morning is your love. Amen. We're going to listen to God's word. Our readings come from Romans and also from Mark's Gospel. The reading is from Romans 4, verses 13 to the end. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. It is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs. Faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but, there, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's reading is taken from Mark chapter 8 verses 31 to the end. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this ad adulterous and sinful generation of the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, ladies. Now I'm going to hand over to Rev Rob, who's going to... Um is going to speak to us today. So Father God, we thank you for Rev Rob and for all that he's prepared for us. We trust in the Holy Spirit, you've inspired his heart. So give us open ears and hearts to hear what it is you want to say to us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Rev Rob. Hello, everyone. It's uh, great to be with you today. Whew, sounds uh, like a bit of a tough reading. Or, or is it? Death is something we don't talk about in our everyday conversations. It's something we tend to avoid. Perhaps it's because it brings around memories and we struggle to cope without our loved ones. We see this in Peter's typical human response to Jesus' mention of his own imminent death. Hopefully we can see something that we can take from Jesus' words in this passage 
to strengthen our resolve and the, and the, and the way we live our lives. Lent focuses our minds on prayer for others and for their needs, for ourselves, to hear the quiet call of the season to resist, not the ever-increasing amount of favourite snacks and treats and chocolate and TV and whatever else, but something together, altogether more serious. The trademark of Lent is a call to resistance, to resist putting our hopes on what we can see and instead trust in what we cannot see. And that is simply because we are on the eve of something better. Praying can sometimes feel as if we are speaking into a void, but our voices are received and held and honoured. God listens and God understands. If we to read Genesis 17, we note that at the heart of it all, God is simply saying to Abraham and Sarah that they are on the eve of something better. What kind of God, you may ask, waits 99 years for the farmer, shepherd and landowner to give him another son? At 99 years of age and with a longing for a child piercing his wife Sarah's being, neither Abraham nor Sarah probably felt that they were on the eve of something better. God renames them both and, and speaks to Sarah's soul by saying that she will become a mother, whether she believes it or not. In the Gospel reading, instead of saying, you, my dear disciples, are on the eve of something better, Jesus tells his followers something like this. You know this journey we're on together? Well, it's going to continue to be like this but only much worse. After feeding the 4,000, rebuking the Pharisees who had asked for a sign and healing the blind man at Bethsaida, Jesus' words in Mark 8 are shocking to his disciples. So on the one hand, we have a God who says we are on the eve of something better. And then on the other, we have that same God in the person of Jesus who says the future is like this, but only much worse. Who are we to believe? Perhaps the answer lies in Jesus' words a little later. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Jesus does not say, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and believe in me. The weight of our cross may threaten to erase our very being and our faith may wax and wane, but our aim is to keep on the path, to keep on following Jesus. The foretelling of Jesus' own death and resurrection before urging people to follow him makes our path as Christian pilgrims incredibly lucid. There will be suffering, but there will also be hope and the promise of something better. The weight of this truth of the journey ahead shakes Peter to his core. The humanity in Peter is confronted with the realisation that this, what Jesus has just revealed, is something bigger than his own person. It is something that Peter will neither be able to stop nor control. And Peter, we see the manifestation of the trademark of Lent, a call to resistance. This is a call to resist the fall into reliance on human things on the human gaze, and instead turn our hearts and bodies towards God. This is the call to go back to God within the wilderness wandering of Lent, and to tell God what it's been like, what it is like, what it really is like, being me, being you, living in our bodies, loving in our bodies, and waiting in our souls. The call of Abraham and Sarah reminds us that God does not really care how old we are, how old we feel, or what state we feel our body or mind may be in. Because God speaks into our place, in the boundlessness of eternity, to our naming and being held beyond this earthly plane. Abraham is established in the promise of, of El Shaddai, often translated as God Almighty. Sarah's longings are planted in and supplanted by God. We, like Sarah and Abraham, are on the threshold, on the eve 
of something better. To say that we're on the eve of something better does not mean that the experience of isolation, suffering and loss have not been real. It does not mean that the wilderness is or has been a mirage. The wilderness is real, but the promise is greater. Whatever we have lived through so far this year, Lent gives us the permission to bring it all to God. The message that we're on the eve of something better cannot and does not speak into our experiences to dismiss them, but rather it speaks to uphold them and to say to us that it is one step in front of the other, in faith and in hope. We take one step in front of the other knowing that our ground is love and that the light of the Easter dawn makes each step more bearable, more steady, more purposeful. Amen. So let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that Jesus helps to keep our minds on divine things and less on our human struggles. Thank you that you are an almighty God. Help us to remember that the next life with you is the best thing. No matter who we are or where we are in life, we are invited to walk in your light with you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Rev Rob. And I wonder, I wonder, what God the Holy Spirit has spoken to you today through Rob's word. Why don't you jot it down? Why don't you why don't you make a couple of notes so you can reflect during the week? of how God's speaking with you. How are you doing in your Lenten journey? Have you decided to go without something? Have you decided to pick up and to do something different? Be encouraged to press on and to keep going. And let's just spend a few moments in prayer. Lord, as we continue our Lenten journey and through this season, Lord, we, we continue to stand into, in the gap and to pray for our world for our nation, Lord, for our government and our leaders. Lord, we continue to pray for our own city here in Stoke-on-Trent. Lord, for our city council and for all the decisions that they make, Lord, as budgets get stretched further and further. God, we pray that wisdom, truth and integrity would reign. We pray for good decisions to be made, that resources, Lord, would be, be spent with the people that need it the most. Lord, we pray for the neighbourhood where we live, for the neighbourhood where you live. Lord, for our neighbours, for our friends. God, we long to see, Lord, more people come to a saving knowledge of your love. Lord, we pray for our families. Lord, we pray for the people that we know who are struggling at the moment, struggling in their bodies, struggling in their state of mind. And Lord, we pray that you would bring your healing and your presence and your peace to trouble hearts, God. And we bring our prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining with us here in the Bucknell team. We're mourning the loss of a, a dear, faithful faithful follower of Jesus who's been part of our parish for very very many years the lovely Anne Marks who love to sing and love to worship God and in tribute to her we're now going to join together and sing blessed assurance Jesus is mine this is my
thank you for joining with us today and may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your heart and your mind and the knowledge of God and of his son Jesus Christ and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always may God give you the strength you need for each day and the hope you need for tomorrow amen have a good day whatever you're doing enjoy the rest of your week and hopefully catch up with you soon god bless you bye for now for your endless mercy